second goal. And then what would be the penalty if you clapped? I don't think there's going to be a penalty, frankly. I don't think anyone's going to say, like, you need to leave. But if you were persisting with clapping, even though you've been requested to do something, that's not very polite, is it? Like, I think people understand if you're requested to do something in a specific context, you can do it. Would it stop you, And if you were somewhere and you felt the urge to clap someone and yet they'd said, we don't clap here? Well, no, it wouldn't. But what we don't do is completely restructure society and completely change societal norms in order to accommodate the sensibilities of a few people. It's interesting, just reading um, a story about this on uh, on the BBC News website, um, an individual called Hannah from Weymouth and Dorset, does, she struggles with loud noises like clapping. Um, she was diagnosed with autism when she was 23. She says, I don't agree with a ban on clapping. Instead, let's raise awareness of autism because this could breed resentment if other students t start to harbour bad feelings towards autistic people or perhaps other people who object to clapping. I mean, that is a danger, don't you think? That there are people who would say, why are we banning everything just for a small proportion of people and blaming them? I think that's definitely possible, but we shouldn't kind of meet the expectations of those judgmental people. There's a lot of anger towards people with allergies as well. Say on planes, if you're not allowed to have nuts, you'll find people say, oh, well, I can't believe I'm not allowed to have my Snickers bar or whatever. But yeah, but having nuts on a plane is not sort of part of our cultural heritage. Clapping in a gig and in a theatre is just a totally normal thing to do. It's totally normal, but that doesn't mean it can't change. Actually, yeah, is this a sign of the fact that um, we...